What's poppin' investors? It is, what is the date today? August 18th, and this video like takes 30,000 to a million. Today, there's not gonna be much uh, philosophical talk. I'm gonna mainly just do an account review and talk about the trades that are ongoing. Some of the status of the trades. Um, if my eye looks a little red, I think it's allergic reaction. I'm having some kind of allergic reaction, I think. But no big deal. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go into the account. I'm sitting near an all-time high. I'm not an all-time high. I scored a new intraday all-time high of 215,000. But right now I'm sitting at 211, 755. The market has started to pull back a little bit. I have some trades that I'm trying to execute, as you can see here on the right. But the targets just haven't hit yet, and I'm just waiting for them to hit. They may not. Um, one of the more notable ones is the one is the big trade that I've been talking about for the last few episodes here, which is the September 16th um, put sell. But anyways, I'm gonna just quickly scroll through the positions so you can figure out exact position by just from all the information that's listed in this little box here. That's it. Um, I saw some PayPal calls against my leaps. This is the credit spread. Um, feel free to press pause anytime. The ADRs, the Chinese ADRs are just doing horribly. Um, that's kind of like where the most of the loss are coming from, considering Apple actually finished up a little bit on the day. Uh, real to income was pretty much flat. Main Street Capital down 2.3%. Paramount down 36 Big loss there. And Smith & Wesson actually needed to be below 15 by the end of the week. And it's sitting at 15.30. More about that later. The investing tab looks like this. Market value is 240000 The margin is sitting at 11.68 times 2. That's 22 23 28 no, I'm sorry 23 36 <laughs> can't do math this is difficult okay very difficult math all right to, um, equities by total return Apple 38,000 uh, profit I guess unrealized realty income and then Main Street capital uh, positions by sized Apple Main Street Paramount all pretty large positions at this point though I don't have any pet positions but they're all look my smallest position is 18,000 that's it Apple comprising like more than 50% of the account at this, at this point um, which is pretty entertaining yeah I just haven't found anything that's better um, you know, where's the where's the account? There you go. Portfolio diversity, 51.29. All right, so that is the um, account tab. I'm going to do some relative uh, performance real quick. I have not been beating the market as of late, I don't think. So one week is 1.2. One month, 12.7. Three month, 27. Whoa. One year, 31.4. Let's see how the S&P 500 did. As tracked by the SPY, SPY. So one day, oh, one week. I guess I'm beating the the market. Uh, one month is nine point seven. Three months, I was some astronomical number, like twenty seven percent or something. But the the difference is getting slimmer though. I think the market's catching up to me. And then one year, I'm definitely destroying the market here. So three point eight versus year on year I am sitting at 31 so 35 percent difference between me and the market so it's great but definitely uh, the market I'm not trying to get complacent the market's definitely gaining on me a little bit so um, I'm not saying that's like I'm sitting comfortable I'm kind of worried actually <laughs> but let's see if I can get this trade to happen right so there are two trades that are happening that are of interest um, both of them have to do with the Smith & Wesson um, ticker. So currently it's sitting at 15.3. Um, one of the trades that uh, we're tracking here is the one that expires this Friday. It's a cold credit spread. Um, if you're not familiar with what that is, 
you can look it up there's people that do a better job than me but I actually have a couple videos on call credit spreads and how to set them up um, then so I need that to drop down to zero I need this 44 number to go to zero and the way it's gonna go to zero is by Smith and Wesson finishing below fifteen dollars at or at or below fifteen dollars by the end of the week. So it's doing some work today. Um, it was down one point three percent, but it's got some more time to go. So that's that trade. Uh, if you want to look at it over here and how it scored, this is basically tracking the margin different the the difference between the two options in premium. Um, the ideal scenario is when Smith & Wesson goes to 15 by the end of the week, that will shrink down to zero. So the way it works is that both premiums go down to zero, the 17.5 and the 15.5. So the difference, I'm sorry, in the $15 one, so the difference is zero because they're all the same, right? But if we're sitting anywhere above 15, then the difference is not zero, right? Then it's some kind of value. And uh, I'm gonna have to, you know, pay up on that. <laughs> um, so that's not that's not cool. But it's the price you pay for hedging your positions. Um, hopefully, it goes down to zero, but it might not. Currently, I'm down two hundred and forty dollars on this trade. You can see down here. Um, today, it returned one hundred thirty dollars. I was down. Eve, I was down even more. All right, the next trade is the, again, Smith & Wesson. And now I made a, an entire video revolving around this trade. So it is the September 16th uh, put. And I, I sold seven of them so far, and I'm trying to sell more. I actually have pending orders right now to try to sell more, but um, they haven't executed because the price of the option has gone down which is it should be going down because it was offering too much premium and that's why I try to take advantage of it you can see my average credit is 30 I have placed three more trades try to get some more of those contracts but they're hard to get they're hard to get because you know people have snuffed out that this is a really good deal so and the price of the underlying has gone up um, if you're wondering how to find this trade, let's go to the ticker, Smith & Wesson, right? And then what you're gonna do is click on the options button. On the phone, it's located in a similar location. This is the website, but you can do the same thing on the phone. And then the first thing you're gonna do is pick, a, pick the date, okay? So uh, the date's gonna be the next hour, which is September 16th. Always when you're dealing with options, make sure you have the correct date first and then you're going to try to uh, figure out what you want to do so in this case we're going to be selling a put all right selling a put um, and then you're going to look through the uh, option wheel here um, you can see the the, pr the strike price is marked with green which is really helpful you can see it's 15.3 so anything you know around there will be it's called at the money all right so for example like a fifteen dollar put or something um, and then anything below is usually well anything that will anything above this since we're doing puts is going to be in the money and then anything below out of the money if you're if you're dealing with calls then it's the opposite all right so let's say you want to buy calls I don't know why I'm doing teaching right now <laughs> just want to update you on the trade but anyway so if if I'm um, if I want to buy out of the money call then I would buy this like let's say $20 strike price call for September 16th for $8 right but that's not what we're doing we're selling puts so here they are um, the 12.5 strike price contract sitting currently at 23 cents per times 100 that's 23 dollars you always multiply by 100 100 uh, shares equals one contract that's how it's done so 
there's some things to notice here. Uh, one is how many contracts have been traded at this level. So the, the, the difference in price is only five cents, which is about the minimum difference. So that, that's, that means it's being traded um, around that area, so that's fine. Next number you want to look at is implied volatility, which in my opinion is very overstated still. 71.36%, very overstated. Next thing you want to look at is the open interest, and this is how many contracts. We don't get to see level 2 data on this contract. Uh, level 2 data means at what price point all the traders have placed their trades. So I'm part of this open interest right now. I have only three contracts waiting to be filled, but whenever the price reaches my desired level. So I'm, I'm represent three of these 1,641 people right, or 41 uh, movements placed by an unknown number of individuals. Could be one individual, could be five individuals, uh, we don't know. So one one thousand. So that's how many contracts there are open right now. Um, I bet you a bunch of them are the five cent level, and then a bunch at like the 0 0.5, 50 cent level. So really far out of where the action is happening. Now this contract can be actually manipulated. Um, here here's an example of what can happen at the price. Look at this, the ten dollar contract one. That's a steal. That's a steal. If you can get this for ten, and you can just that's just free money. But obviously, it's not enough return uh, for a one month of waiting. But it's it's still better. Look at this implied volatility ninety four point nine. Um. So, anyways, that is the twelve point five contract. We have a lot of information here. Uh, you, uh, the volume means that's how many options were traded in the day. So only four options were traded that day. So extremely thinly traded contract, right? Four trades, that's it. Now, as time goes on, it, I'm, even 25 cents might look like a good deal. So I may be represent like 100% of the action on this contract on this day. Just me, just one person, it can happen. So when you're looking for you know uh, deals like these, it's very possible that um, you're the only actor in there. It could be a computer on the other side. It could be another player, but you, you may be the only buyer or seller that day. Um, you can kind of manipulate or at least force the market to reveal it, the true price of the option. So what do I mean by that? Um, so let's say that Look, there's only one bid at 20, right? And 10 asks at 10, at uh, 25. So what I can do, if I want to, is I can just, I can sell to this guy at 20 to see how deep the pool is. So how many people are actually willing to buy it at 0.15, right? Because it's only one, okay? So I put up some collateral and I take the 20 bucks from this guy and then or gal and then um, there's the next bids are going to show at 15 and, and I want to see what that number is like is it f 15 people trying to buy it at $15 or is it 150 people or is it a thousand people like I want to know how deep the market is right so I'm kind of forcing the market to reveal some level two data, <laughs> just a little, a little tiny sliver of it, which uh, should be available. There might be a website where I can look at it on the options, some level two. If you know anything about that, um, please, please, please give me a comment and tell me where I can find level two data on particular options like these. It would be really helpful to find out. But anyway, it's a little trick to kind of like force, uh, force the market to reveal Kind of like solitaire, you know. If you uh, manage to um, get the card out of that little deck thing, you reveal the next card, right? It's exactly the same thing. One to one. <laughs> okay, um, the delta of this is so low. Look at this. 0.13. So what delta means 
is just um, how correlated this option is to the underlying. So for every one dollar worth of movement, this option will move thirteen point four cents. That's all it means. All right. So that's the trade. Okay, the other trade. This is what it looks like. So this is the call credit spread. Um, it started all right around this like twenty five dollar twenty five cent difference. And I was doing fine for a while. I probably should have closed it here at point seventeen, right? <laughs> But then it increased all the way to 0 0.74. Now it's sitting around 0 0.44 difference between the two contracts. So, anyways, hopefully this goes down to zero, this $440. If not, if Smith & Wesson goes up tomorrow or the next day, then I'm kind of screwed. I'm going to have to pay up quite a bit of money. Not looking forward to that. All right, pretty tight today, so I'm going to call it a day, a night. It's pretty late in the night. <laughs> Hopefully this Thursday that's coming up or you're probably watching this video on Thursday is good to you. And uh, let me know if you can find, if you, if you have a website that tracks level two option data. Much appreciated. All right, that's it for now. Peace out.